Hello everyone, my name is Ms. Abad, your career and post-secondary advisor. I'm glad that many of you have sent me emails inquiring about the courses that you need for admission to different post-secondary institutions. To those who have not met me yet, please come and see me in the Career Center to discuss your plans. Today, I'm going to give you an overview of post-secondary, what it is about, what your options are, how to look for information that you need, and steps on how to apply. What is post-secondary education? Is it about choosing a specific career? Or is it about personal development? or developing the skills you need to become successful in any number of different jobs and careers? Is it about getting higher salaries and employability? The truth is that post-secondary can be about all of the above and more, and you definitely don't need to have all the answers right away. In fact, it's okay to change your mind about what you want to get out of your post-secondary experience along the way. So when post-secondary education is discussed, most students think of universities However, there are many options available. Post-secondary comes in many forms. It may include public or private institutions, colleges or universities, career and technical schools, vocational schools, and trade schools. It is also important to learn the different kinds of credentials, meaning what you will be qualified to do after completing your post-secondary education. There are different choices one can make when planning post-secondary education. Some of you might already have a program or career path in mind, or maybe some are still trying to figure out what you're going to do after high school. Direct from high school, you can enter the workplace to be able to earn and save money for your tuition fees. Maybe concentrate on your job first and after a year, go to post-secondary. Some can manage to juggle work and studies at the same time. So while working, you can apply as a part-time student. Some students may consider retaking specific high school courses to boost their grades or take up those courses that they didn't have, which are prerequisite for them to apply to the specific program of their choice. Our school district offers continuing education for students who want to do academic upgrading. Many colleges also offer upgrading in courses like English, Math, or Science. Students may also enter trades or apprenticeship programs. If you're very hands-on and would like to gain experience and earn your money while learning, apprenticeship might be an option for you. Some students will take a break a semester or one year after high school. The gap year is intended to give a students a break from academics to discover themselves and consider what kind of education and career they want to pursue. You can maybe travel the world, do some volunteering, or earn a bit of money. And for those who already have decided what programs they want to study, will directly go to college or university or to other post-secondary institutions. Considering any of these pathways is okay. There's no right or wrong pathway. Know that any of this progression after high school provides valuable skills and experience you need. Earning a credential confirms you have reached a specific educational standard and have certain knowledge, skills, and experience that makes you suitable for a job or in continuing studies. In choosing credentials, you might consider the time commitment. Do you want to study for four years or less? You should also think about the cost. How much will be the tuition fees, housing, and other education expenses? Another thing to consider is your learning styles. What type of a learner you are? Do you prefer hands-on, individualized learning, or more theoretical learning? If you're someone who would like to take one step at a time, you might consider studying for one year or getting a certificate, then continue with your program, taking up a diploma, then a four-year degree program. Certificates are short-term learning that prepares you for work in a specific occupation. It takes a year or less of full-time study to complete. It needs high school completion, and most of the times it can be used for admission to a diploma program. An example is the accounting certificate at Douglas College. The program provides a concentrated study of accounting subjects and will prepare you for an entry-level position. You can start working as a bookkeeper. A graduate from an accounting certificate can further their career in accounting field by taking up a diploma program or a Bachelor of Business Administration. 
If you want a program that takes only two years to complete, you can apply for a diploma program. Diploma programs have well-rounded curriculum, which prepares students to work in a particular field or group of occupation, and it's high school completion and specific grades or high school courses for admission. An example is a diploma in business management, which you can continue and further your career by applying to a bachelor of management program. Another type of credential is associate degree. These are general transfer degrees. Associate degree takes two years of courses in the arts or sciences, which will allow you to transfer to a university and enter the third year of four-year bachelor's degree program. If you're interested in arts, philosophy, or psychology, then you can study associate of arts degree. To those interested in science and math, you can study associate of science degree. Another credential is the bachelor's degree. It requires four years of study. Students can gain specialization in one subject area through a major or honors program. An example is Bachelor of Arts or BA, the Bachelor of Business Administration or BBA, Bachelor of Science or BSc. After studying a four-year degree and you still want to enhance your skills and knowledge, you can take up a master's degree. Mostly it requires two year, additional years beyond your bachelor's degree. That will be a total of six years education. You might have seen some of these abbreviations, MA or Master of Arts, MSc or Master of Science, and MBA or Master of Business Administration. The doctorate degree is the highest level of academic achievement. It requires four to seven additional years beyond your master's degree. A doctorate is a qualification that awards a doctoral degree. In order to qualify for one, you need to produce advanced work that makes a significant new contribution to your chosen discipline. Doing so earns you the title doctor, hence the name. The PhD or Doctor of Philosophy is the most common type of doctorate and is awarded in most academic fields. Another example of doctorate degree is the Doctor of Medicine. Students who are interested in technical or trade work and enjoy hands-on learning, you can apply for an apprenticeship program. Apprenticeship is a post-secondary pathway that leads to trade credential or ticket. It is a combination of on-the-job training and classroom learning. Once you completed your apprenticeship and received a ticket, you are qualified to work in a skilled trade. Most apprenticeship takes four years to complete depending on the trade. Anyone can be an apprentice. It is open to women or men. You can be an apprentice even if you are in high school or have finished college or just thinking of a career change. As an apprentice, you are in fact an employee and will be paid while you are on the job learning. Included here is the business labor market outlook. It shows a variety of industries that are expected to have thousands of job openings in the skilled trades over the coming years. The Youth Training Trades Program, which is offered by the school district in partnership with KPU, BCIT, VCC, and FIT, will give you a significant head start in post-secondary education. Students who successfully completed Youth Training Trades will receive a dual credit, meaning you will earn credits towards your graduation and at the same time getting a post-secondary level one credits of the technical training component of an industry training program. Youth Training Trades are for grade 11 and 12 students. If you are interested in this program and would like to take advantage of the free tuition fee, then contact Mr. Ryan Burt immediately or visit the Delta School Careers website for more information. Some of the programs that are offered in Youth Training Trades are Construction Electrician, Auto Service Technician, Professional Cook, Carpenter, Welder, and many more. Universities offer many different programs at the undergraduate and graduate level and beyond. Programs in universities are theory-based and focus on independent learning and critical thinking. Students can major, minor, or specialize in different fields of study. It is divided into a research university and a teaching university. Research universities such as UBC, SFU, and UBIC are large institutions which have more academic and theoretical learning programs. The advantage of enrolling at a research university is that you can learn directly from your scientific mentors. Since their faculties are usually experts in their specialized fields, they are naturally a go-to source of advanced knowledge. Most courses in research universities are offered as lectures, so a lecture may consist of 30 to 200 students. 
credentials offered in new research universities are bachelor's, master's, and doctorate degree. Unlike research universities, where the faculty double as both teachers and researchers, at teaching universities, they have faculty whose job is mainly to teach. The teaching universities are small universities that are usually closer to home. These institutions provide more practical and hands-on learning program. Class size is smaller, only around 35 students per class. Some of the teaching universities are KPU, UFB, and CAPU. Credentials offered at teaching universities are certificates, diplomas, associate degrees, and bachelor's degree. Colleges prepare students for specific careers or fields. Students learn with a more hands-on approach. The programs provided in colleges are a combination of theoretical and technical knowledge and skills. Many students are focused on studying large universities and consider colleges as a second option or a backup plan. But in reality, colleges are a great first option. Because of its smaller class size, it offers more personal learning experience. Students can easily connect with their teachers. And it is no way lesser education because it follows university's same standard of teaching. Another advantage is that studying in colleges is significantly more affordable. They also have fewer admission requirements, so it's, it is easier for students to get offers for admission. Some of the well-known colleges are Douglas College, Langara, and Vancouver Community College. Another type of post-secondary institutions are the trades and technology schools. These institutions provide students with real-world skills and practical experience, so students are work-ready from the day they graduate. Trades and technology institutes are connected to industry. Their leaders and instructors are experts in their fields. Because of having small class sizes, students will have more one-on-one -on -one attention from instructors. BCIT, Nicola Valley Institute of Technology, and JIBC are some of the trades and technology schools. They have continuous enrollment throughout the year. They also offer credentials such as apprenticeship training, certificate, diploma, and bachelor's degree. Let us take a look at the admission requirements from different post-secondary institutions. Colleges' admissions criteria, such as in Douglas and Langara, are more achievable as the minimum grade requirements is lower and number of academic courses required is less compared to universities. High school diploma and completion of English 12 or English First Pupil 12 are the general admission requirements for most programs. At Douglas and Langara, generally two to four approved academic courses might be required. The academic requirements will differ for each program. Students must also look deeper into the high school prerequisites for each program they are going to be taking. In some instances, they will only require English 12, but would strongly recommend students to have a Math 11 or 12 or a Science 11 or 12. These courses do not have to be presented for admission, but are prerequisites for course registration. Note that Douglas and Langara have equivalency in academic program and placement tests for selected subjects if you are missing or need to improve your grades. It offers flexible options that will help you fulfill the entrance requirements of the program you are applying to. Students while upgrading courses can take a limited number of undergraduate courses at Douglas and Langara. Just for comparison, I have included in the slide admission requirements for Douglas and Langara's business and engineering program. As you notice, Langara's requirements for business does not require a math course. Engineering programs for both schools have the same requirements. Comparing the admission requirements of teaching universities such as KPU and CAPU, you will see that they generally have the same requirements. Depending on each program, they offer academic courses required could be two to four courses. Same rules apply. Students considering applying to teaching universities must look deeper into the high school prerequisites of each program they're going to be taking. Again, a comparison of the business and engineering programs, CAPU requires a math course while KPU only need English 12 for their business program. Engineering programs for both institutions have the same admission requirements. Admission requirements for trades and technology programs varies for each program, so check the individual schools for their requirements. 
Courses required are mostly English 12 or English First People 12 and Math 11 or 12. The grade requirements are also achievable, minimum of 50% or higher. You can find out if you have the knowledge and skills required for entrance into a trades or technology program by taking an assessment test. Schools also offer upgrading courses for students to improve their knowledge and skills in the areas required for the chosen programs like BCIT. In choosing a trade program, make sure that it matches your skills and interests. A trade that matches your interest that is also in demand in your area is one worth pursuing. Admission requirements for trades and technology programs varies for each program, so check the individual schools for their requirements. Courses required are mostly English 12 or English First People 12 and Math 11 or 12. The grade requirements are also achievable, minimum of 50% or higher. You can find out if you have the knowledge and skills required for entrance into a trades or technology program by taking an assessment test. Schools also offer upgrading courses for students to improve their knowledge and skills in the areas required for the chosen programs like BCIT. In choosing a trade program, make sure that it matches your skills and interests. A trade that matches your interest that is also in demand in your area is one worth pursuing. Admission to research universities is competitive and enrollment is limited. For SFU, decisions will be made on the basis of the five approved grade 12 courses. Grade 11 courses will be also evaluated. SFU does not look at the grade point average of the student. It follows a list A and list B courses with more emphasis on the approved grade 12 courses. SFU business and engineering programs will require supplemental application. The supplemental application, which consists of essay and reference letters, will be used to assess other factors beyond academics that contribute to your overall preparedness for the program. UBC considers your grades in all grades grade 11 and grade 12 classes, paying special attention to courses that relate to the degree you're applying to. They are looking not just on your overall grades, but also the academic choices you have made and your personal profile. UBC are looking for well-rounded students. The personal profile is a crucial section in your application, wherein you will answer a list of questions. Personal profile is your achievement beyond academics. It will decide whether you're a good fit for UBC. So it is important that when completing your personal profile that you will provide UBC a sense of who you are, what you have overcome, and what you have achieved. SFU and UBC requires Language 11 or a second language course. Please note that SFU accepts beginners or introductory Language 11. While at UBC, beginners or introductory course is not accepted. Online course completion deadline during normal school year is January 31st, but with COVID situation, these institutions have moved their online course deadline to March 15th. Please watch out for announcement or updates in fall 2022 if deadlines will change. Students hoping to attend these universities are going to need high grades as their admissions are competitive. If you did not meet the admission requirements, don't lose hope. You can start in colleges or other universities and transfer to UBC, SFE, or UVic after a semester or one year, depending on the program requirements. Here's the list of courses required for the programs under Faculty of Arts and Science. If you need guidance or want to double check which programs to take and how to look for the specific requirements, you can come and see me in the Career Center. Programs under Faculty of Science will have more courses required than the Faculty of Arts. When looking at the admission requirements, all programs related to arts, example is psychology, philosophy, history, or humanities, will fall under the Faculty of Arts and they will have the same course requirements. The same applies to the Faculty of Science, where all sciences programs will require the same number of grade 11 and grade 12 courses. Here is the admission requirements for the engineering programs. It requires four grade 12 courses and three grade 11 courses. For the business program, four grade 11 courses and two grade 12 courses are required.
And here is SFU's admission requirements. They are more comprehensive than UBC. For students planning to study at SFU, I encourage you to see me so I can give you a copy of the detailed requirements and we can discuss it to prepare you for your course selection. I have highlighted list A. I will show you the different courses under list A in the next slides. There are many courses to choose from to satisfy the requirement for list A courses. This is the list A for the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. And here are the academic requirements for the Faculty of Applied Science and in the Speedy School of Business. I have highlighted the list B. The different courses under list B will be shown in the next slides. And here is the list B courses. So from the list B, you can choose two courses you might want to take up in grade 12 to satisfy the admission requirements of the business program at SFU. In preparing for course planning or selection, you must decide what program or programs you are interested in studying. Select the post-secondary institutions where you want to apply to and check the admission requirements to know what grade 12 courses you need. In checking your admission requirement, again, I suggest that you come and see me so I can guide you on what grade 12 courses to select. There is another way to check the admission requirements, and it is through the post-secondary institution's website. Or you can visit Education Planner BC, which is in the application portal for post-secondary schools across BC. I will show you how to navigate the Education Planner in a few, in a few minutes. Education Planner BC is a great resource for students. It is a centralized system that helps students in planning, searching, and applying for admission to post-secondary institutions across BC. Students have to create an account to apply to multiple post-secondary institutions. Before you send your application, you will be required to pay the application fees, which can cost around $35 to $70. Students can get instant notification once their applications have been received by the intended school. You can look for the programs you're interested in by clicking search and click on the undergraduate from the drop down list. If you're looking for a trades program, you can also click on the trades button. There are also filters that can help you in searching for the program. You can search by institution, subject areas, credentials, and many more. So here I click on Douglas College and SFU. There is a drop down list for the different business programs. Once you click on the program name, it will give you more information such as admission requirements, past facts, and possible occupations. I search the business programs and I choose the accounting program from Douglas College. To get more details, check the fast facts, admission information, and occupations. Under Fast Facts, you will learn about the length of the program, tuition fee, whether the program is an open or limited intake program, and its start date. The admission information will provide you with the academic and non-academic requirements. On the top of the page, next to the institution's name, is a link to the Douglas website. You should start searching your program using the Education Planner BC to help you with your course selection. Here is our Career Center website. Please check it out for post-secondary events, opportunities, and scholarships. Our post-secondary handbook is also available in the website. Learn about the different programs by checking the exploration page. It has assessment tools that can help you choose the careers you want. There's also a link to Mr. Ryan Bird's career education website. Under the post-secondary page, you will find info sessions, announcements, application procedures, post-secondary websites, and entrance to scholarships. Get a head start in learning the different scholarships. Check out the scholarship page. We have school-based and external scholarships. If you don't know what to do after graduation, don't worry. The good news is you're not alone. 
Here are some steps that may help you choose the post-secondary program that will fit you. First is think about your favorite courses you've taken in high school. Would you be happy learning more about that subject in university? Studying something that interests you will make it easier to get to class, to study and complete assignments. Next is identify your strengths. Knowing your natural talents, skills, abilities, and personal accomplishments will bring you one step closer to choosing a program. If you can't identify your strength, ask your friends and family what they think your strengths are. Your teachers, what do they compliment you on? Doing career quizzes and chatting with your guidance counselors and career advisor about your interests can help you decide what you want to do in post-secondary. Do your research, not just using internet, but reading brochures, attending info sessions, open house, or campus tours to learn about the different programs available out there. Ask any of your family and friends in the career or field you are considering. Thank you for watching the presentation. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. I hope to see you all or hear from you soon.